How many are looking forward to a better year? Pretty much everybody. So, so this, is, this is how it happens. You, at the end of the year, and especially when we have years like we did last year, some are saying, well, it's got to get better. And nobody says that anymore because you never know, right? <laughs> You're hoping it's going to be better, right? And hoping that, well, as we get to the, the, the 15th variant <laughs> or whatever we're going to be dealing with, um, but there's an anticipation because no matter what is happening in your world, no matter what is taking place, we know that not only God is in control, but God has a plan and God has provision and God has more than enough to carry us no matter what's going to take place. And, and so as we are looking at a couple of things, I want you to say, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. And it's, it's no surprise that if some of you are wondering uh, a couple of songs ago, there was a, a message in tongues and then an interpretation. If you want some more information about that, it's uh, kind of mapped out in 2 Corinthians in, in your Bible to give you some insight of the reason why that there are uh, the Holy Spirit would speak to us. And very specifically, that message and that interpretation said we need to be looking forward. Now, I did not tell anybody this message. In fact, the Lord only gave me this message this morning. I had something else planned. And so to reiterate, the Holy Spirit wants you very specifically to understand it is time to look forward, to begin to focus. Someone say focus. Not on the past and not on the situations and circumstances. It oftentimes unravels us and discourages us because Satan would have you to believe that you are no longer worthy or no longer have the ability to be used of God because of your past. If that was the case, none of us would be used. Not a single, all of us are guilty of the law. There are none righteous, no, not one. And for me to say, well, my sin's better than your sin. My sin's better than yours. Stupid. <laughs> no. What it is is that we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And it's an unrighteous, no, not one. Uh, one of the greatest prophets, Isaiah, said, my righteousness is filthy rags. And so if one of the greatest prophets in the Word of God is, is not able to hold that standard, then who am I? I would tell you this, the only way that we are good is comes through the blood of Jesus Christ, who washes us white as snow. And we have provision, we have a future, we have a hope in Him because of what He has done. i got to get an amen every once in a while or we're going to be here till the new year. Some of you say, well, this is, this is it. This is the last message of the year. No, I got another one for watch night, so you want to hang out there. But some of you, you're not going to see anybody else for a year, you know, until till next year. So absorb it. Anyway, I want you to turn with me, if you would, Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Verse 18, this is chapter 43. The book is Isaiah. A portion of Scripture that I'm sure that you have seen, that you have read, and you have, you have received many times, and, and I'm going to put it in context along the lines that are applicable to our life and what's going on in your life right now. And this is the powerful part of this whole message, is that what we are dealing with, we can not only apply, but put it into motion, and it's going to bring some change. It's going to bring some help. I don't know about you, but I need some help. I need a little bit of help. I need a lot of help. I need some provision. I need some strength to get me not only through what we're dealing with, but whatever God has in store for us, whatever is what's next, is going to be blessed. It's going to have some provision. It's going to be exciting. One thing about serving Jesus, it's never dull. I mean, you can get bored doing a lot of things, but if you really are, I mean, really are going after God, you're not going to be bored. You're going to be on your toes. You're going to learn how, what it means to conquer the enemy. You're going to know what it means to push on and push through. You can know exactly what it means to know the excitement when you're able to encourage someone and lead someone to Jesus. There is never a dull moment. Someone help me out and say amen. But here we go. Verse 
18, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. He said, I will do a new thing. I will do a brand new thing. And it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Brand new. Brand new. How many got a Christmas present? Everybody get a Christmas present? Somebody got a Christmas present? Everybody got a, Anybody not get a Christmas present? Anybody not? So y'all got something for Christmas? Anybody get something used and something old? Somebody just went to their closet and wrapped something up, some old thing that they're not using, give to you? You know, anybody do that? And they, and they even put their name on it? <laughs> to you from me? No, usually what we do is we, we buy something new. You get something new. You get something exciting because you want to give a good gift. You want to, because of your appreciation, you appreciate somebody. You love somebody. You want to express that love and that appreciation. And so that's what we do. And we want new things. We, when God says, I'm going to do a new thing, that's exciting to me. Something brand new. Something eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, hasn't even entered into the heart of man what God is going to do. There's some powerful things that he has yet to reveal and has yet to release. And I want to be right in the middle of that. I want to be part of the new thing. God is doing a new thing. That's got to get you some excitement this morning. Now, now here, here's, the, here's the whole deal. If you haven't got excited this whole year, now's your last opportunity. Here's how it goes. You get excited, you say Amen. When you say amen, I get excited and I go faster. I go faster, we get done sooner. Yeah. About time. That's the first time somebody said amen all year. You know, it's kind of right on. There's a blessing of the new. There's a blessing of the new. The new, the new year that God is going to give to us, I see great provision, great blessing. And uh, that's what we do. We, we oftentimes we think of, well, when God is going to do something new, we just take the old and we throw it out so we can prepare for the new. But God is doing something new, but it's not necessarily removing the old. And I'm going to give you some insight along those lines because we all have a past. We all have circumstances, situations that we have gone through, that we've dealt with. And it is very specifically what you have come to this arena where you are at now, how you view life, how you process things is because of what you have walked through, what you have gone through. And oftentimes we're asking, God, would you just remove this out of my life? I know I need a new blessing. I know I need a brand new hope in you. I need something of a future that does not include all the old nonsense. And we want that, and we desire that, and we want God just to all of a sudden show up with the big magic wand and boom, right on the head, and everything has changed. We want God to, how many of you need your brain washed? Not just my brain, all of me, come on. And it, 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 that is the provision, and we, we want Jesus, would you, just, would you just do this? Would you just supernaturally, just, just totally, totally do the brand new thing that you're talking about? And he is, he's doing a new thing, but it's not necessarily how you think it's going to happen. See, God uses the old. He takes the old, and it's something of a process. He'll begin to process and render and recycle. Yay. I know a lot of people, they think, well, you know, I'd just rather um, you know, bypass those kind of things and do something different. See, in Genesis chapter 50, if you're a quick turner, I'm going to go dive right in. Genesis chapter 50, verse 18. And uh, see, this is the story of Joseph, and Joseph ended up as he was sold into slavery, some of the brothers wanted to kill him, but one of the brothers said, hey, we have an opportunity to make some money. Let's we'll sell him into slavery. We'll just make some money. You know, they're still going to stick to the story that some wild animals killed this, this younger brother that was the favorite, and they were getting tired of all the stories and all the, all the, and the stuff that was going on. So that was in their heart. We're going to get rid of the problem, and they sold him into slavery. But, and, and he went through some difficulties, ended up in prison, a false accused, 
And through God's provision, we know that he was exalted to the second in command of all of Egypt. And there was a purpose behind that. How many know the story? There's a purpose behind the reason why Joseph went through what he did. And we pick it up the story when he's now meeting his brothers, his brothers who are starving and coming to Egypt because they heard Egypt has food. And, lo and guess what? The dreams that Joseph had as a boy saying, I see all of you bowing before me. They're coming to fruition. It's happening. And as they're bowing before him, this is what he says to them years later. He says to the same ones that tried to destroy him, the same ones that brought so much pain and problems. He said, he said this to them. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. Now I want you to underline that. I'm in the place of God. And I'm in God's provision. I'm in God's will. I'm in God's purpose. I'm exactly where God has placed me. And it wasn't just in the palace. It was also in the prison where God has placed me. For if he had not been in prison, he would not now be in the palace. At least not your head. Yes. There's a, a purpose behind your past. He said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now, that's a God thing. Have you ever experienced a God thing in your life where you thought... It was coming to an end. You thought that there is no hope in this. And all of a sudden, God showed up in the midst of the pain and the problem and began to bring help and begin to bring hope and begin to bring healing. And it had to be a God thing. And when it did happen, you know it was God intervening for you. And you know God was showing up. And now, not only is your faith strengthened, but you see how God is moving. And you see God's provision. And your faith is in Intact. And you know now God is the one who does what he said he can do, even through you. If you believe that, say amen. In Psalm 51, Psalm 51, verse 10, it says, David, David is saying, Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me. Restore. Someone say restore. Renew. Restore. Recycle. Restore to me this day the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. You see, David here, he's going through a rough time. And the reason why he's going through a rough time is he did some things and he brought some trouble upon himself. And for those of you that don't know the story, here's David. He's a warrior. He's anointed as a warrior king. He's anointed as one that goes out and mighty in battle, defeats the enemy. And that's why he was placed in that position. But here David is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's back in the palace and he's just lounging back. He's just kicking back when he should be out there leading the armies. And he should be, that's where his anointing is. How many know that God not only blesses you, but provides for you, gives you the anointing that you need, the strength that you need when you're doing what God's called you to do. When you're not doing that, then ah, you're trying to find joy. You're trying to find hope. You're trying to find peace. You're trying to find the direction and the connection, and nothing seems to work. But the minute you begin doing what God's called you to do, things begin to fit. Things begin to work. Things begin to all of a sudden make sense. And David, not doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he gets in trouble. There he is, and he's sitting out there, you know, and he's, I don't know, he's, he might be in a recliner, and there's somebody feeding him grapes, you know, and they got another one that's got a big palm frown, and, you know, causing a little bit of breeze there for old King David, old warrior king. He's just kind of lounging, kicking back. And he looks out over the veranda down below 
And there is a young lady who's taking a bath on the roof. Her name's Sheba. But she was taking a bath, so you might know her as Bathsheba. Just seeing if you're awake. And David, who is married, he calls for her. He said he sends for her, so he sends some servants. He says, go, get, go call her and bring her in. And he commits adultery and he lies with her and she becomes pregnant. Now he's got to cover up because you know, he's the king and, he, and everybody is going to see what's going on. And so what he does is he calls Uriah home, that's her husband, home from the battle. And so he says, uh, you know, you need to come home, spend some time with your wife. You know, you've been doing a great job and thinking, well, he's going to come home, sleep with his wife, and, and, and nobody's going to know the difference. But Uriah, he said, I'm going to sleep outside. I will not go and lay with my wife while my men are fighting in the field. And so that didn't work. So what he did, he said, I want you, he called the captains of thousands, and he said, I want you to send Uriah to the front line so he'll be killed. And that's what happened. He had him killed on purpose to cover up his sin. How many are with me still? This is, now this is the greatest king outside of Jesus. Jesus is the greatest king, but David, that's why when Jesus was here on the earth and there were those that were crying out to him for help, they would say, Jesus, son of David. David is known as one of the most great and powerful anointed kings that ever was ever on the planet. Now, even those that are close to God stumble and fall. Don't have Every day in control. And here's David. And his sin is now revealed through the prophet Samuel. As Samuel shows up and says, you king, you're the one that has done this thing. And then immediately he began to repent. Broken. And here is his heart. And he's saying, create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit. Within me, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. But give me the joy, the salvation. And through repentance, God restored him. And that's, that's the great, that's the awesome thing about our God. It doesn't matter what yesterday was. We repent and he washes us white as snow. He'll give you a brand new day, a brand new future, a brand new hope. But David is not saying, he's saying, create in me a clean heart. The heart that I have, wash me, cleanse me. And he said, renew that spirit. He knew what it was to be close. He knew what it was to, to worship. He knew it. one of the most powerful books in your Bible is called Psalms. David wrote majority of those psalms as songs to the Lord. Now, he didn't say take away this situation, this circumstance. But he said make me right in the midst. And that's so important to understand if you're looking forward then what we need is God's help with our now. All of us have a little bit of baggage. All of us, I said all of us have a little bit of baggage. Some of us are like the Samsonite factory. We got a little more baggage. But no matter what's going on, he is able to renew and to restore and to bring joy and to give us a brand new year with his provision in his presence. Amen. Are you looking forward? Are you looking forward? Come on, are you looking forward? It's important to have the right vision. It's important to be able to see. 
and to, to see clearly and to look into the provision and to, and to allow him to give you those visions. My father, when he was pastoring a church in Superior, Montana, and this is a small community, pretty rough community, a logging community, logging, a little bit of ranching, but mostly timber industry. And so there's, there's some pretty, pretty tough, rough and rumble individuals. And here, here was uh, one of his board members. So let me give you an idea of how tough some of this was. Is one of his board members was named Jesse James. Literally, he's named Jesse James. He's named after the infamous you know, outlaw. Anyway, and Jesse was a notorious horse trader. He, he traded horses, and, he, and it seems like Jesse always got the better end of the deal. He'd always do something to cause somebody, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd always end up somehow taking advantage, not necessarily trying to, but that's just the way it was. And, and, and the only store in town was also a bar. It was a little grocery store and a post office all together. And the, the owner of that store um, had, a, had, a, had, a, had horses too. And Jesse, one day while he was in the, there in the, into the store, he, he said, you know, hey, I, I got a horse I'd like to trade. Do you have a horse? And the, the, and the other man, the store owner, said, you, you know, I, I have another horse. I have a horse that... He said, my, my, horse isn't, my horse isn't doing too well right now. And Jesse says, well, mine doesn't look good either. He says, okay, well, well no sense in arguing or, or, or bickering or, or trying to, we'll, we'll just trade straight across. So they signed papers and, and uh, on the day they're bringing the horses and, and uh, they, they trade horses and and, and uh, a couple days later, Jesse was back into the store, and the, that store owner said, that horse you gave me is blind. He said, well, I told you he didn't look good. <laughs> Jesse said, uh, uh, you got the better deal anyway. The horse you traded me died this morning, so I guess it's okay. Both headed to the dog food factory. <laughs> Are you looking good? <laughs> In other words, are you, is your vision good? Are you seeing what you're supposed to be seeing? Do you have, come on, do you have vision? And not just, can you see in the physical? I'm, I'm asking you, can you see the spiritual? Can you see what God wants to do? Would you allow him to anoint your spiritual eyes to be able to look forward to see what God has for you this year? He has great things for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to open doors that only He can open. He wants to provide for you. He wants to carry you. He wants to draw you into a greater relationship. Are you able to see those things? Do you want to see those things? Do you want to see how God is going to give to you the hope and the help? And part of that is understanding where we came from. We talked about this great king called David. When was God, listen to me, when was God training David to be the king? Some would say, well, when he was killing giants, when he was fighting Philistines. I'll tell you when the training began when he was a shepherd as a boy. When he was leading the sheep. God was training him to be king. We look at Moses, same thing. Before Moses was raised up to be the deliverer, God was also training him in the wilderness. Joseph, God was training him in the prison before raising him up. Joshua spent 40 years wandering, knowing that God would open doors and God would give them the victory, waiting for opportunity. God was raising up a leader, but it was taking a while. In the wilderness. How about Paul? Before the Apostle Paul became the evangelist and the missionary that changed lives and brought the gospel to the Gentiles, he spent two years, two years with Barnabas before he ever preached a message. 
We see Ruth and Noemi, how God ministered to them when they had nothing and wondering how God was going to provide for them. All of a sudden, the doors opened as they trusted Him. We could look all through the Word of God and seeing how God did what He did and how He prepared them long before He placed them in a position of ministry. He was doing the work using their past. Using, yeah, the great things, but also the difficult things. God will use the giants of the valley to strengthen you so that you are able to climb the mountains. Did you hear me? God uses the giants in the valley that you've been fighting. You've been fighting some giants in the valley, but God is using those things and using those circumstances so that your strength is renewed. Your faith has been, has been placed in the position of authority so that you can ascend the mountain and get to the point and the place of blessing. God will build on your past. Some of the things that just the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, God will build on your past. The good things of your past and the bad things of the pla- uh, your past to bring blessing into your present. God will take those things that the enemy meant for evil and bring it around for good. You might not see anything good. You might look at a situation and say, I can't see anything possible about this being Remotely good. One thing that you can always look at and say, God brought me through. Where are you at right now? Well, I'm at Clifton Assembly. Where do you think I am? I know where you are physically. Where is your walk with the King? Where is your relationship with Jesus right now? Some would say, I'm closer to him than I've ever been. Some would say, I need some help. Some would say, I am in the process of knowing him more. Some would say, well, I'm far, but I need to get close. There's a lot of responses to that question. Where are you at right now with Jesus? And all of us should be able to say, I'm on the right road, heading in the right direction. I'm getting closer to him. In this moment, I'm closer to him than I was yesterday, than I was a year ago. And that's my heart. That's my desire. And the reason why you would respond that way is because we recognize how much we need him. We need him in a greater capacity, more now than ever before. We need His help. We need His hope. We need His healing. And healing is not just in the physical. I know that there are many here today that need a touch in body, and God is still Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. But how many of you this morning, the greatest provision of His healing is also in my mind, in my heart, in my emotions, in everything that has gone on. I need His help. I need His touch how God does that is he takes those things of your past he takes the good he takes the bad the bad he turns around for good the good he builds on it's called a foundation those foundational situations and circumstances took place in your life whether you're the one that opened the door or whether God allowed it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter how or why it happened what matters is God always uses it for the glory and for the provision and for the help and for your your blessing. It comes down to this. Each one of us we're the culmination of our past. Where we're at right now. How you look at life. How you process Circumstances and situations. How you respond to something is all because of what you went through up till this point and this moment in time. You are everything about you. You are your heart, your mind, your emotions, 
how you view circumstances and situations, all these things are because of what you went through up till now. The experiences that you've had, the good and the bad, the doubt and the disillusionment, the fear, the intimidations, all those things is because of your experience. God allow you to go through what you went through if you were serving him yeah here's a better statement God has protected me even though I was out of his provision and out of his will doing my own thing wandering down the road wondering where are you know where am I going why am I going and God was still protecting me because that's his love how I many of y'all know that God loves the prodigals? I gotta get a woohoo on that one. Come on. God loves the prodigals. That's why he runs after you. Turn to your neighbor and say, knucklehead, God loves you. <laughs> All that. God not only understands, but God uses for his glory and he'll work through it. He takes the bad and he brings healing. He takes the hurt and the pain and He turns it around and He shows you how He's carried you. He shows you how He's healed you. He shows how He provided for you even though you were on the outside looking in. And everything that the enemy tried to do to destroy you, God has made a way. He's brought healing and He's brought protection. He's brought provision. Even though, and how many this morning, raise your hand, I should be dead by now, but God has brought protection, provision, and healing. God has rescued me. And so in that, I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, last year had purpose. And everything that was going on with the COVID and the, and the finances and, and everything that's going on, God had purpose of last year. But I'm saying last year is in 2021. Now, 2022, I am with excitement and anticipation saying God has got great blessing. And this is what I mean by God's got great blessing because whenever you go through great trial and tribulation, on the other side is great blessing. There is so much good that is about ready to show up. Some of y'all got to say, thank you, Jesus. Last year had purpose. It's the preparatory work. He's preparing situations, circumstances, preparing governments and, and nations. Preparing our heart. Come on, He's preparing our own lives. And He's preparing this world. I believe for an outpouring, for a greater move that's going to shake the nations one more time. You've got to know that nothing takes God by surprise. All this that's taking place in your life God didn't wake up one morning and look at seeing what's going on in your life and say, wow, I didn't see that happening. I hope they make it. Not, not only did God understand and know what's going to happen long before it ever happened, but God's got a provision and God's got the help. God's got the healing. God's got your life, not only in his care and his hands, but he also has answers. And not taken by surprise. In fact, he is the great symphony conductor that is orchestrating all of this. Orchestrating your life. Putting things together. Putting things in motion. And it's all going to culminate. It's no surprise to me why God is quickening so many hearts today. So many I've been able to connect and contact, the last, especially the last few weeks, been talking to a number of people, those that have been discouraged, those that have been disenfranchised, those that have been set apart, those that have, that, that have walked away, but now he's quickening them again. And there's a reason why. The reason why, not only because of his love, but God's got purpose, God's got plan, God's got help, God's got healing, and he's putting things together because he 
is doing a new thing. And that new thing includes you. He's doing something new right now. And he wants to start in your heart, in your life. Would you stand? <clears throat> I don't know if there was disappointment this year for you that everything did not come together like it was supposed to. I mean, there are some things that worked out just great. There's some things that you say, I'm. And for those of you that were praying for a white Christmas, it happened briefly. And then and some of you, you're, you sing the song, let it snow, let it snow, somewhere else. It basically happened in my house. So if, you, if you're needing, uh, you, ha- you need a snow fix and you're thinking I need some snow, come on up, I'll fill your trunk up. You can take it to town and just build yourself a snowman and do whatever you want with it. You've got plenty. Anyway. You might have had a tremendous, powerful, anointed year, and you're just rejoicing that God did what he did, and you're excited. You might have, you might have had one of the most difficult, trying years of your life. It might have been somewhere in between. But this is what I want to encourage you. This year is coming to a close. And 2022 has promise, has power, has provision, has purpose. God has your life in his hands and in his care. And he's going to do what he said he's going to do. How many say, I want to be one that has the vision, is able to look forward to see what he's going to do for me. And so... Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for the promise of your word, and I thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to hearts and lives. Lord, I'm asking you that you'd quicken this word to every single one that has heard and bring the encouragement that they need, not only to look to you, not only to receive, but, Father, that you'd begin to do what only you can do, cause our heart to be changed, renew the right spirit, wash over us, Jesus. And bring back the joy. We need you, Father. We need your provision. Lord, I'm praying for the one that this morning that they're struggling and there's, there's overwhelming situations, circumstances that they're dealing with. And Lord, they haven't shared that with anybody. You're the only one that really knows what's going on. And I'm asking that you would begin to bring a hope, begin to bring an encouraged strength that just washes over them, that you are not only uh, aware of what's going on, but you're already releasing the help that they need. May they begin to see that, not only feel it, but begin to see your hand moving in their life right now. Lord, I pray for the one that needs a touch in body. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. It's not only a promise of your word, but it's who you are, the proclamation. And Father, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for the miracles that you performed. But I'm asking you to do one more time to touch those that need your help, need your healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the one that needs financial help. Lord, they've been struggling. I'm asking, Lord, that you would open the heavens. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and bring that provision to these that need you. Even now, Jesus even now. Lord, those that need restoration in mind and relationships or the things that are strained, things that have been unraveled, Lord, you bring back the hope and the help and the healing now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, this quickening me that there might be someone here that just really needs the Lord to intervene for them today, that today they, they need that hope and that help renewed. And you might not know what to pray. I know that there are those here that you pray with great authority and the power of God ministers through you and the Holy Spirit prays through you. But there might be one here this morning that might not know how to pray or what to pray. So I'm gonna lead you in a prayer this morning. And if that's you and you just need God to anoint your vision, anoint you so that you can look forward 
to look to see what he has for you. You need him to begin to build upon the, the pain and the problems to what the enemy meant for evil. He will turn it around for good. And to bring you that hope and that help. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Would you pray it out loud? Say this. Dear Jesus, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for speaking to me. I thank you for your word that has brought hope, that has brought help, is bringing healing. And I'm asking you, in your name, in Jesus' name, that you begin to anoint my eyes so that they can see what I need to see. Like King David, I pray that prayer. Wash me. Cleanse me. Bring a new heart. And renew my mind. Renew my spirit. And bring back the joy of my salvation. I need you, Lord. So I open my heart. I open my life. And I ask you to come in. Give me the help. Give me the hope, give me the healing that I need to walk with you. I look to you, I trust you, Jesus. Do the work in my life today, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Say amen. Would you give him praise one more time? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Prayer staff, would you come on?